Hi all, this is Agatha. And this is Raul. And here is another episode of SciWi. So on today's episode, we are going to talk about a study that put to the test the common idiom that something is not rocket science or that something is not brain surgery when you are talking about, you know, a topic that is not as difficult as it looks like, mm-hmm. you know? Like, and they use that so often in movies also. <laughs> like, they are explaining something, the IT guy, the IT character is explaining something, and then they are like, yeah, because this and this, come on, it's not brain surgery, or like, it's not rocket science, meaning that it's simpler than it looks. Ooh, ooh, if I can, it reminds me of um, uh, the old British series called Misfits, where one of the characters gets a superpower of being a rocket scientist. (laughs) Yeah. And it's really great because she seems like, you know, a girl from the hood and uh, people think that she's super stupid, but actually she is, she has a brain of a rocket scientist, so she calculates everything super quickly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so they very much play with this uh, thing of like, Something is not rocket science, but for her, the the, the science is super easy. Yeah, and they take her mm. to the Ministry of Defense because she has designed some some missile, yeah, some missile mm-hmm. or something. And they are like, okay, where did you steal this from? And she's like, fuck off, I designed it. <laughs> that was my British accent. Uh, thank you. And let's never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> so. This idiom works because we think that rocket science and neurosurgery are very difficult fields. Which seems reasonable, to be honest. (laughs) Probably they are, because... It's probably more difficult than my job. So, So anyway, this study put to the test how difficult those fields actually are by measuring the intelligence of the people that work in those fields. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, they thought that... (laughs) If those fields are really, really complicated, only very intelligent people will work there. Yeah. Right? And will focus their careers on that. Mm-hmm. So, they made a study, and it was published in the British Medical Journal, where they checked if aerospatial engineers and neurosurgeons are actually more intelligent than average people. Mm-hmm. Okay? They had volunteers from the United Kingdom from Europe, which saying that volunteers from Europe is like, well, are you Italian or <laughs> Russian? So, well, I don't know. From USA and Canada. And those were all asked to complete the Great British Intelligence Test, which is a standardized test to check your IQ. I think they were like doing that on TV that you could like answer questions and there was this big IQ test and then you could like check your results and something. I always wanted to do that to see how smart I am. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to know, but also I'm a little scared of the result. Yeah. <laughs> you are stupid. Well, yeah. I hope I will learn whether, um, like, what are the chances of me being more stupid than a than neuroscientist. A well, yeah. N- neurosurgeon. So, in this test, that it was completed online, of course, because they didn't ask people from all over to go to UK. <laughs> Um, this test is supposed to challenge you in different areas, being semantics. Semantics is uh, the words. words and relations between words, grammar and vocabulary and all that. Mental manipulation. Which is? Uh, yeah, mental manipulation is... How good you are in making people do what you want? No, that's being a psychopath. <laughs> mental manipulation is how good are you at imagining things. For example, rotating objects in your head, mm-hmm. or um, imagining geometry in okay, your head. Okay. Okay. Attention and emotions, uh, problem solving, memory speed, and spatial ability. Mm-hmm. Okay. There were 329 aerospatial engineers and 79 neurosurgeons. So few neurosurgeons. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why so little neurosurgeons, but... But okay. Maybe it's so difficult to view and that... Um, they they just... are too busy for your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so their results were compared with the average results of 18,000 British volunteers that also took the test. Okay? Which British probably were very average. Well, I guess. 
18,000 is a very good sample, so you can get a very good average from that. I wonder from people from all different backgrounds. I don't know, like Polish people? Are Polish people smarter than the British people? I will not say yes. <laughs> I cannot or... confirm nor deny. Yeah. So, the results were actually a, a, little, a little shocking, I would say. It's not what I expected. Turns out that neurosurgeons scored higher than engineers in semantics. Mm -hmm. The researchers. Well, it's not that shocking. Well, the researchers say that probably it's because the profession of neurosurgeon requires to understand very long and very complicated words and medical terms and medical vocabulary. That it can sometimes be really complicated because, you know, some diseases can have like, I don't know, long names that come from Greek or mm -hmm. Latin. So you have to be able to remember them, understand what they mean and all that. Read a lot of journals. Mm -hmm. about so yeah, with time, for sure, you see a word that is not Obvious. like familiar to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But it's similar to other word that something, something. So... This relation between words, maybe they are able to do it because their profession is based on that. Aerospatial engineers, they are just like, ooh, a new star, let's call it Boo Boo 5000. Ooh. That's not what aerospatial engineers do. No? <laughs> That's cosmologists or astronomers. Aren't they all the same? <laughs> no, they are not. Like, just like, <laughs> no, they people are. who work at NASA and just like, yeah. Throw them in one bag. Okay, no. No? No, okay. Are special engineers, aka rocket scientists, what they do is that they design aircrafts mm -hmm. and objects that have to be able to fly and yeah, move so they from call... one point to another. Okay, so they don't name planets, they, they name robots, and then they're like, Boo Boo 5000, the robot, okay. which still proves my point that their names are... Um, much less complicated than the names of diseases of, like... I, I cannot even come up with any. Well, I don't know. Anyway. Chromatocroscopatia. Huh? I have no idea. I just made it up. Okay. Because <laughs> maybe I should be a neuroscientist. If some neurosurgeon, neurosurgeon. Is, is here, maybe they can tell us. <laughs> so, aerospatial engineers scored higher than neurosurgeons in mm -hmm. mental manipulation and attention, mm -hmm. okay? meaning that they are more attentive to detail and they have this ability to imagine things in their head. Mm -hmm. The well, results are so, true. because probably it's because they have to be able to imagine geometries and complicated surfaces in their head and then design them and then build them, you know? So, I mean, if you see a rocket, it has a lot of complicated geometries, mm -hmm. so, you know, neurosurgeon just works on a brain that probably they our brains are all more or less the same yeah probably and they are already designed so you don't have to design <laughs> anything designed by god no no not by god by, by mother nature <laughs> and yet no differences were found between neurosurgeons and space engineers in memory mm -hmm. problem solving and memory recall speed Meaning that they are both as good mm -hmm. in those areas. Okay. Now, how do we compare to the average? No. To the average British person. When compared to the general population, aerospatial engineers showed no differences in intelligence. Mm -hmm. Like their average score was pretty much the same as the average score of the normal. British person that took the intelligence test. Okay. Maybe the British are especially brilliant. Maybe I was wrong. Well, that is the thing that they've been saying all along, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and we never listen to them. <laughs> but compared to the general population, the surgeon's ability to solve problems mm -hmm. was higher than you know, the, the average person. Their memory recall speed was slower. So they had less memory abilities mm -hmm. than the average British, even though their ability to solve problems was higher because they could do it quicker. Okay, so they basically used all of their memory for remembering those difficult words. Mm -hmm. And then they, <laughs> it didn't, there was nothing left for any, it, it, anything. It else. didn't pay off, I guess. But researchers suggested that this 
is probably because neurosurgery is a science that develops really quickly and there is always something new. There's no need to learn things because they're going to change anyway. <laughs> Just Google it. Or, or can be because they are trained to be like that. So maybe it's not that they are better at this because they were born this way, mm -hmm. but because there was years of training to solve problems really quick, even though their ability to memorize things is not as good as the average person. So in conclusion, what they came up with is that maybe these people are not gifted with a better intelligence or like, you know, more amazing skills. Mm -hmm. Is just that they are trained in their fields very specifically while they, of course, neglected other areas because it's not what they were focusing on, okay? Then it would mean that rocket scientists and brain surgeons are not more intelligent than average people. It's just that they were actually trained in those areas and that's what they chose. Okay, well, that's supposed to, uh, I guess, give a hope to all of us that it's yeah. not that we are too stupid to do that it's just that you weren't crazy about the aircraft mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> since you were kids remember that movie October Sky yeah with of the Jay kid. Gyllenhaal yeah mm -hmm. it, it, this movie of the kid that saw the Sputnik cross the cross the sky and he was like wow that's amazing the satellites and shit and then he decided that he was going to be a rocket scientist. Even though he wasn't especially smart. He wasn't especially smart mm -hmm. and he was not doing good or like especially good in school or anything like that. But he went to his the teacher of physics and the teacher of physics said, okay, you will need to learn some maths before you build your first rocket or you're going to blow your hands. Probably. Mm -hmm. So he gave him some books on advanced calculus and differential equations. That is something that I saw in my second year of bachelor. And in something that I never and saw. Kid, <laughs> and this kid learned it when he was like 15 or 16, mm -hmm. something like that. And then he was building his rockets and then he decided to be a rocket scientist. Uh, and then eventually ended up in NASA, working mm -hmm. in NASA. All this, of course, is a true story. So yeah. it, it was a pretty cool movie. I really recommend it. So in the study, since came up to the conclusion that in fact, rocket scientists and brain surgeons are not more intelligent than the average people. They propose that instead of using the sentence it's not brain surgery or it's not rocket scientist to explain that something is simple or easy, to use other sentences like it's a piece of cake or it's a walk in the park. That is how the study finishes. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. like, all of that work, mm -hmm. all of that science, the mm, statistics, yeah. the testing, <laughs> uh, like, all of that, just to be like, guys, 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 how about you don't use those words? Just use other words? Yeah, just use other expression. Ah. So. To, to be a researcher. <laughs> right? <laughs> and they took funds for that. So, well, I don't know. I am thinking that... Um, I mean, I don't know exactly what to think about that because is it that, like, they, like, if they are not especially smart, mm -hmm. then, then what? is it good or is it bad? I mean, like, I, I want to believe that if, if I go to a surgeon, mm -hmm. he's going to be top of the top and, you know, he will yeah. not mess up with my brain. Yeah, of course, but this means that since these areas are extremely complicated okay because you cannot deny that they are complicated yeah okay well, i could not do that and it requires years of dedication to master them mm -hmm. this doesn't mean that the person who is working there is more intelligent than you they are just more experienced in this field mm -hmm. okay meaning that you can be a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon if you are if dedicated you to it of course this doesn't mean that you go to your surgeon and when they tell you this and this, you should be like, excuse me, mister. For sure but you're no, not that you are intelligent. Not that intelligent. Okay, no, you should still trust your surgeon because <laughs> they have years of experience in that. But it means that you can do it if you want to. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's a matter of training. 
No. So we can use it to tell kids that uh, you can be whomever you want. If you want to be yeah. a rocket scientist, you can. Yeah. So this happens with everything else. Other areas, like playing piano or being really good at chess, mm -hmm. you also can master those uh, fields if you put enough time, okay? Yeah, but that would explain why, why I'm not so good at any of those things. Because I'm not good at putting time to things. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, it's not really how intelligent you are, but how much you practice, mm -hmm. okay? Now, this is interesting because, of course, reading this, I was like, is this actually true? So I was reading another study <laughs> that showed that chess grandmasters, which means that people that are very good at chess, mm -hmm. okay, they are also not more intelligent than average, but they do score higher in the part of logical analysis and memory in this intelligence test than the average person. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if you are really good at chess, you unconsciously are developing the areas of logical analysis and memory. Mm -hmm. And it happens so often that chess grandmasters, they are like, yeah, this um, strategy is the same as... I don't know, the shepherd's gambit used in 1977 by the Russian Mikhail <laughs> something, you know? Because they have huge memory for this thing. Mm -hmm. But later you tell them, go buy milk, and they forget. Yeah. Okay? okay? So, it's also significant that chess masters were also good at other fields that required the same skills. Mm -hmm. For example, there was a fella called Emmanuel Lasker, who was a very good chess, he was a chess master, and he was a mathematician. Mm -hmm. And another guy called Mikhail Bodvinik, who was also a grandmaster, who was electrical engineer and computer scientist, which are two areas that require memory and logical skills. So, some people say that chess should be taught in schools, like it was in the Soviet times, <laughs> <laughs> because they... You know, you they practice. force your brain to develop, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I know what you will teach our kids to do. <laughs> yeah, and also, like, a lot I of... I never learned how to play chess, so... A, a lot of teachers in schools, I was reading in this study, was they were quoted that they proposed that chess should be taught because it teaches you memory, logics, a strategy. They tell you to relate to your adversary. They force you to also accept the times that you lose. So it teaches you how to, you know, take in the defeat. You have to think about your future moves. And mm -hmm. like, if you move this way, where it's going to lead you and what can you do then? Yeah, so it, it is significant that even though chess players are not more intelligent than average people, they were also good at other fields that were not related with chess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course, there were also plenty of chess players that were only chess players, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, and also so, probably it's similar with other kinds of games and or with other, other kinds of activities. with other fields, like, for example, ballet. Ballet dancers need to have a lot of resistance and endurance and flexibility, which can also be useful for athletes. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Or I'm very good with doing puzzle and finding the small differences and finding the missing piece, mm -hmm. which you're not so good at. No, I'm not, because, and also I don't have the patience to, <laughs> to do that. Which makes me better about uh, at my job, where I need to be patient and look into details and mm -hmm. uh, uh, try to put it together. Yeah, exactly. And then I was checking, based on the UK market, what are the jobs that people voted to be most stressful? Mm -hmm. Because I was like, oh, this topic is interesting. So, in the UK, the three most stressful jobs were first, military. Okay. Because they say that... Well, you can get murdered. Military officials risk their lives and they have to take... Well, not really murdered. ...strategic decisions every day. Well, murdered, I mean, if you go to another country to shoot at people... And you Don't get be shot. surprised that people shoot you, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, military, because it's very stressful. Mm -hmm. Healthcare worker, because, because... a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure, a lot of, you know, people demanding things from life you. Life and death. Yeah. 
and oil rig worker. Hmm, so those that they, those, they're sent uh, in the petrol platform, of the ocean. yeah, mm-hmm. in the sea. That to me, that job must be the most boring yeah, job I would rather call and it the most boring. stressful because you are like, okay, say bye to your family for six months and go to a petrol platform in the middle of the ocean. Like, what the fuck is that? So, like, also, how do they build them? I have no idea. They build them in the land and then they transport them? or I, I have no idea. This because so they are weird. like, you know, they, have, they are not floating. They have to be standing I, I on the... I think we have to... Um... Rewatch uh, the uh, the movie with Bruce Willis. Oh yeah, uh, how it's called Armageddon. Armageddon. That yeah. movie is terrible. We will learn so much. From we that. Will, I didn't learn shit from that movie. <laughs> I I learned a lot. I didn't learn anything. Love and loss. Or, and also, like how amazing Bruce Willis is. That movie we already knew that, but that movie is the type of movie that if you say that you don't like it, people will assume that you lack manhood. Like, you are not a man if you don't like that movie. Really? Yeah. There are some movies that, as a man, you have to like being Armageddon, The Rock, which are of the same director, by the way. You know The Rock? The Rock or The Rocky? No. The Rock. I don't know. The Rock? Yeah, it's a movie with Ed Harris, based on this this prison in San Francisco, in, in Alcatraz. No. No. Oh, it's a terrible movie. And if you don't like The Rock, apparently you are not man enough. Also, Rocky, which Rocky is a horrible movie. <laughs> that is, is one of the worst boxing movies ever made, but okay. And the Braveheart. I watched Braveheart lately. Well, re-watched, because as a kid I watched it, and I was like, this movie is fucking amazing. So I rewatched it, and then I was like, this movie is the most boring that was ever made. And if you are not a man, if you don't like Braveheart, apparently. We got so much out of the topic, yeah. but I would not say that Armageddon is a manly movie. If anything, it's a movie that makes you cry like a baby. And I would rather say that it's very emotional and not manly. And also, that movie makes no sense. Like, why would you teach oil rig workers how to be astronauts instead of teaching astronauts who are already engineers how to drill a, a fucking asteroid. No, it's I easier. Think it, I don't think so. It is? Because you have to know the, the to know what? mechanics of that. But the, most engineers are mechanical engineers. They yeah, know but that. It's, you know, the surprise. It seems What's simple, surprise? but actually anything can happen. Okay, let's move Why on. Why would you assume that an astronaut <laughs> cannot do that? Well, anyway. Because apparently they are fucking stupid, okay? Uh-huh. As the study suggests. Okay, okay. Huh? No, uh, anyway. <laughs> so, and the three less stressful jobs are landscaper. Oh, that's a nice one. Landscaper and groundkeeper, which is, you know, like, like being gardener. a gardener. Okay? Mm-hmm. And we all know that gardeners are hot. No? No. They're usually very busy. And grey and a bit chubby. And wear ugly clothes. And they're dirty with stuff. Well, we haven't watched the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is the first less stressful job. Voted by people in the UK. Mm-hmm. The second is web developer. Which I don't really because agree. Because no one knows what they are doing. Yeah, so they can take two weeks. Even though they did it in one day. But every programmer that I've met. They were always pissed at something. Being like. Oh, this fucking shit! The code doesn't work. I something, think it's something. More of you like know? Um, you know, the, the the personality, not job description. <laughs> and the third less stressful job is massage therapist. Okay. Massage yeah, therapist. That seems you know, like. You put a candle. And yeah, pretty relaxing. You can kick the shit out of someone and you send them on their way. So. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, that's all that I brought today. And we got very wild. <laughs> it was an interesting topic, what can I say? Well, so, yeah. At least uh, what you have to remember is that mm-hmm. uh, people that you think are smarter than you, they probably are not smarter than you. They might be better at some things, mm-hmm. but probably you're better at other things. Yeah, like... Than you. You know what they say, that uh, you cannot judge 
a fish for their ability to climb a tree. Mm -hmm. so, exactly. Exactly. Now, and with this hopeful message, <laughs> we will send you on your way because this has been all for this week. If you liked it, share it with a friend because sharing is caring. If you want to learn more, just go to our Instagram at sci.y.podcast where you can drop a like if you like. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> and we will see you next week. Ciao, Jenkipa.